whoever it was to tape these together in the shop, I think you should be shot. If you haven't been following this story, I'm on a journey getting an electric vehicle battery on my house, connecting it up to an inverter and adding some of my solar to it with the aim of buying electricity in when it's cheaper and selling it back to the grid when it's more expensive. Money. Moolah. It will be interesting to show that electric vehicle batteries have way more life in them than people give them credit. Now that we have a working battery, we finally need to get on with creating the home for this battery to be lifted into place and to live for many years. I'm going to be sitting the battery on a concrete pad with heat pump feet and mounting the battery pack up against my wall on the side of my house using Unistrap. Let's get started. We have had some deliveries. We've got the Unistrap that I talked about and there's a whole bunch of other stuff here as well. My plan with the Unistrap and whoever decided that taping together Unistrap was a good idea. Ugh. Try not to scratch the galvanizing coat off while also taking the tape off which just doesn't want to come off in one piece. Anyway, my plan with these is to have my, my one secured to the wall, bolted level all the way up the wall, which will then allow the battery pack to fix to it. And then, next to it, I will have another one which I'll bolt through there, which will then give me something to bolt to this face, um, which will then box it in effectively if I do want to do that in the future. End up against the wall like that. So the battery bolted to this one, and then whatever I choose to clad will be bolted to this outside one. That's my uni strut. Let's have a look at what else we got in our box of goodies that turned up. I then have some feet. This is how I plan on mounting the Tesla battery to the ground. As I said, I, I want the weight to go through the ground on a concrete pad. So I need that battery to sit in something. And this is the idea I had. These are good for things like heat pumps or if you're installing roof solar. So they should be good for what I need as well. Okay, so I've got longer ones. I've got a longer one for the center, but at the side, the two edges, I'm using these rubber mounts with a, like a uni strut attachment. The rubber's softer than I expected, if I'm completely honest. <laughs> and that's quirky. It's got a spirit level built into it, which I suppose you tear out if you want afterwards. I'm gonna have one of the smaller ones each side and then in the middle, a longer one. The front of the Tesla battery, the middle part, sorry, that has to sit slightly lower than the two edge ones, so I just need to get the position and the depth right. I think the the front one will be set slightly into this concrete, and the other two will be sat on the level on the concrete. So there's some feet. I've got four in total, too many for what I need, but there you are. I've just got to repeat that all over again, which in fact I was getting more of this frustrating tape off. Not a good idea. One eternity later. Whoever it was to tape these together in the shop, I get it, I understand you're bunching them together and making your life easier, but if you want this to look nice, you've got to remove it all. Some commercial places, it might not matter, who cares, it's a little bit of tape, but I think you should be- Okay, okay, okay. You don't do that again, find another way. That's the second time that I've mentioned the tape on these now. As you can probably tell, that's annoying me quite a bit. And while I mentally take my anger out on a person who's just doing their job, when actually it's the man, it's the company that I'm annoyed with, let's move on to the next stage. Residue, which I've got to get off. Andrew's still moaning about some tape. Anyway, rant over and I will continue while you get on with something far more exciting and maybe you watch a build montage.
Yeah, I'm now stood on a box. Those Dewalt boxes you saw in the background, they're pretty new to me, and it was only a matter of time before I started standing on them. <laughs> Feels quite sturdy. Probably gonna do this a bit more. What is the biggest lesson you have learned from all of this, Justin? Definitely lesson learned to where actually sneakers are boots when going up a ladder. Anyway, let's get that fixed in here. There we are, a 12 mil hole. I am gonna need a hammer for that. Now, I don't know how much of this footage I'm meant to show. Does the YouTube audience want to see the entire process? Perhaps sped up like I have. Most people know how to fix something to a wall, right? Use fixings, make it nice and strong. I'm using my first fixing to mount the Unistrut to the wall. This allows me to get it nice and level for my remaining few fixings. This should mean that the Unistrut is nice and secure, right? Once we know it's secure, we can then move on to our second Unistrut. Warning! The following scenes contain socks and sandals. Now that, that is very secure. Wonder if I can do both feet off the ground or is that a really stupid idea? Oh, my wife's gonna kill me if I hurt myself. There's my thumbnail. Right, I think that's gonna hold a battery, don't you? exactly where my second unistrut needs to go we've got some existing cables i can't move the whole thing any closer to the right because of the soil pipe so those cables have got to go i'm going to move them over just enough and it's a bit of a tricky drill because on the other side of this wall we've got inverters we've got batteries and we've got a whole bunch of cabling so i've got to be pretty accurate with my drill here This cable will eventually connect to an earth rod for backup power through the inverter. When you're using backup power, you're not meant to use the distributor's earthing system. I don't have a need for that yet, so I'm not going to put the earth rod in, because I know that my existing supply is somewhere underneath where that earth rod is to go. With my electrical connection being upgraded to three phase at some point, notice I've gone quiet on that one. The old supply cable will be disconnected and redundant. That will be the time to put that earth rod in. Now that the space is clear for my second Unistrut, we can get on with installing that. You don't need to see that again, do you? So let's get mixing up some concrete in the wheelbarrow. Unfortunately, it's not enough to justify a mixer, so it's all going to be mixed by hand. I start off by getting my earth inspection pit secured. The rest of the concrete pad will be nice and simple from there. The keen-eyed among you will notice that at the far end there's some sand. When I removed the slabs and broke through, finding the existing concrete pad, I discovered a manhole underneath 
roughly where the wheelbarrow is. It kind of makes sense now with the soil pipe right there. The battery won't be sitting on the sand, but I do want to have a nice rectangular concrete pad. If I ever need to access the inspection chamber in the future, I can remove the slab and the sand, which will then allow the cover to be lifted. Would have meant I would have needed to have disturbed two more slabs. I kind of regret that now. I wish I'd looked down there. It's going to bug me. This mix is a little wetter, should make it easier to pour. Do I pour it? Will I get it on the slabs? Hello, it's another day, and you join me now with the concrete pad down. So we have a concrete pad, and we have this heat pump foot mounted in the middle. I have put this directly centre between my two bars. I'm not overly happy with the way this concrete pad is. It just doesn't look as neat as I wanted. But if I'm completely honest with you here, I had to pull this forward. I messed up my measurement which meant this had to come forward another centimeter to fit it into the middle but hopefully now that will be enough notice that this is slightly set into the concrete as well it's a centimeter lower which then means my two feet at the side will then be at the right height so here is one of my feet we have cut a notch out of the center where it mounts on the battery there is a section of steel that slots behind so by removing that it will nicely slot into the middle now that brings this video to an end we have a level base i've checked across and i am pretty happy with that it's nice and level i know that this center one is level because i made sure when i set it into the concrete that it was nice and level so we have something solid for the battery to sit on We've got nice solid sides for the battery to be mounted to. So it is just a case of getting this into position now. Next job, I've got to remove this roof and get it craned in. So that's what you'll probably be seeing in the next video. Oh, we're starting to see other batteries coming down. You know, one more thing before we go. Since I started this project, the chap who's been dealing with building up the communications between batteries has just come out with a extra bit of software that allows you to parallel up batteries. So if you've got batteries that are very similar voltage, you can then add them in parallel and they'll be able to communicate like that. So you have a master and a slave battery. So that does mean that in the future, if we wanted to add more batteries, then we could. I might have to rethink where I'm putting these. Do I put it further down the wall there next to the pile of mess that I've moved from the alleyway back and forth? Hmm, that's a lot on one wall and how do we get it up there? Maybe I should have put these down the garden and built some sort of battery house. Only time will tell, hey? But I don't think that once this is finished, this is gonna be the end of it. Hmm. Oh, this is just too much fun. Anyway, until the next video, I will see you as soon. Battery man out. Oh, I've got even more dust to tidy up for me now. <laughs>